evening. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for another day that we could be here to worship you, study your word. We beg for forgiveness of our sin, whatever things we have said, done, or left undone. Anything, God, that we have done that would separate us from you and you would not hear our prayer. But we are here to worship you in spirit and in truth to praise you and recognize you as the one true and living God, the God who created all time and matter and space, the God who loved us so much that you sent your only begotten Son to be our salvation. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to this earth, taking the form of a man, knowing full well what was before you, but you loved us so much that you came and you fulfilled everything that God required of you. And we thank you. We pray, Lord, that you give all of us the ability to 
study your word, remember your word, and to share your word with others who do not know Jesus Christ, that we might bring more people to you. We pray, Lord, for our brothers and sisters who are sick. We pray that you would heal them, Lord, and make them well. We have so many at this time. We pray especially for the Norman family facing the hardships that they are. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless them. Bless Pat and Knox. May they deal with their problems and be well. We pray, Lord, that you give all of us the strength to recognize and support our brothers and sisters when they have a need. Give us the ability to share their problems and help them to, to make through their problems in, a, in the best and most appropriate way. We pray, Lord, for this country. We pray that you would have mercy on it, Lord. There's been so much terrible, terrible sin towards you done in this country. Killing of babies, perverting young people, breaking the rule of law, turning away from that great and wonderful constitution that you gave us. We pray, Lord, that you would have mercy and help all of us who are Christian to do all the right things to try to turn this thing around, if, if at all possible. But your will, <clears throat> your will be done in all things, Lord. We pray that you just give us the strength to deal with whatever you will to happen. We pray for all of our brothers and sisters here at Liberty that you continue to give us strength and love for each other. Help us to grow. May we accomplish good things with the things we try to do to bring more people to Christ. We pray, Lord, that you bless us now as we go into the rest of this service this night that we might take what we hear and Use it for your good. We pray this prayer in your most holy name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Before Brother Larry stands before us to speak this evening, we'll sing I'll Be Listening, which we certainly will be doing. If you'd like, please stand as we sing this song.
always, I appreciate being able to come back to Liberty. In fact, where I was raised and all that, I guess I say that every time I come, and it is, as many years has gone by since those days when we would walk from the house up here and fill up a bench. Uh, but that's the way it was in, in those days. And it's always good to come back uh, to, to Liberty. Uh, had some asked about uh, um, our son Ricky, how he is doing. And um, he is doing better than we deserve, I guess. He is doing really well. Um, he building a small house and he wired that, but he tries to do a little too much, I'm afraid, at times. Um, but um, God certainly answered our prayers. We appreciate y'all praying uh, because uh, it, it, uh, we know that um, uh, he was only short days away from uh, leaving this earth if he had not got a liver and we got one at, at the uh, last few days. We, we just know that God answered our prayers and things happened but he uh, has to go every Monday get blood work and every three months he has to go back to the hospital in Gainesville for uh, they have to check him. I think they have cut back two of his rejection medicines, and so he's doing better uh, in that for right now. Some other problems, but it just seems like it's one thing, but he's done well. Thank you all for asking and, and for your care and your prayers uh, for, for that. Can you imagine gathering in a room and you're waiting. You're waiting for the Lord to come. To come in and address the group. To have dinner with him. Can you imagine as you sit there what you think about? What is the Lord going to say? What is the last lesson that he is going to leave with us? Things that we need to hear. And so they must have been sitting there, these 12 men, as they are waiting for the Lord to come in and address the group. We all know the story, and I'm not going to cover all of that, but I did want to begin with that in John chapter 13. Uh, when our Lord entered an upper room and addressed the disciples. Actually, he taught them a lesson. He taught them that they were going to be expected to do things that they did not think they could do. When people ask me about what their responsibility will be in a mission trip. I will tell them that you're going to have to do some things that you may not want to do or do not think you can do. But very quickly you learn, and these disciples, they were learning. They were learning that they would have to do some things that they didn't want to do. And as they listened to the Lord, they began to say, as Peter says, not me, Lord. You'll never wash my feet. And the Lord said, if I don't wash your feet, I'll have nothing to do with you. And he said, not only my feet, but my hands, my head, the whole works. And he begins to learn some things. No, the Lord's not teaching that we should take up foot washing. But he is teaching us that there are jobs sometimes that nobody else wants to do. There are things that you'll have to do in, in, a, in a mission work 
that's going to be difficult. It's going to take you outside a comfort zone. It's going to demand kindness and compassion and concern for those that you are ministering to. You're going to expect, be expected to do something that nobody else wants to do. And guess what? You will learn as a Christian, not just a missionary worker, but as a Christian, there are things that we all must do. I tell everybody that we are going to help people who cannot help themselves. We're going to do things for people that they cannot do for themselves. And we're not going to get anything in return. A while back, a few years ago, before the pandemic hit, we were serving the people of a community called Metati. And people from all over the country were coming in there. And there was nearly 2,000 people lined up to see our doctors for their eyes. The commander of the military unit there, the police unit, wanted us to have lunch. And so I went to have lunch with them, along with the uh, father of the vice president and another individual who was the president uh, of a lot of different things in Panama. And one question that was asked to me by the commander was, how much do y'all pay these people for coming? And I said, not a, <laughs> no dinero, no money. And I told him everybody has to raise their own money. They take their vacations. And they couldn't believe it. They said, our doctors don't even do that. Our people don't do that. They had not learned that kind of service. It's not always pleasant, but it's always gratifying. We learn things. I want to read to you something that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Philippi in chapter 2 in the book of Philippians. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, hoarded, held on to. He made himself nothing, taking on the very nature or form of a servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. I think that's a fantastic sermon right there. And that's the motto that we try to teach people. Of the hundreds of people that I've had the privilege of traveling into the mission field with, I've only had one person not return. I had a dentist that said, when you go off of Larry Brady, it's all work and no play. And we do work very diligently. And by 6 o'clock in the morning, I don't know if you know J.W. Furr, but J.W., he'll knock on the door and he'll sing the song that used to come on the radio, get your head out of the bed, eat them grits and spray them pits, head out of the bed. <laughs> he'll do that every morning at 6 o'clock. And we begin our day with a devotional and then, then breakfast. There's a song, I'm not going to read all of it, but it says, Oh, the bitter pain and sorrow that a time could ever be when I proudly said to Jesus, All of self and none of thee. 
And my wistful heart and heart said faintly, some of self and some of thee. And day by day his tender mercy, healing, helping, full of free, brought me lower while I whispered less of self and more of thee. Higher than the highest heaven, deeper, deeper than thy deepest sea, Lord, thy love at last has conquered none of self and all of thee. That's a great motto, isn't it? That we need to learn when we're serving the Lord. I want to read to you, and I'm going to tell you some things here in a second, uh, of some of the things that we have been able to accomplish. Uh, Mark put some of these pictures on here. I didn't put together a PowerPoint because everything I could show you, you've basically seen before in one way or the other. Don't it just be new people? Um, but I, I got a letter from a 11-year-old from uh, Michigan. I held a gospel meeting there a couple years ago, and um, the, this young lady, I had only met her through her sending me messages, and she knew I was coming to this gospel meeting uh, not too far from where she worshiped, and her grandmother brought her over that night uh, so I could, could meet her. But this 11-year-old made 103 Christmas gifts. Of course, her parents took her shopping, and her daddy said, don't ask to go shopping again the rest of the year. And because she said, They're always, she's always wanting this or that or the other. And here's the letter she wrote me. Hello, Mr. Brady. I just wanted to thank you for helping to make me a better person. You may think that you haven't made any difference in my life, but you have in so many ways. You help me remember that I should always be thankful for what I have because others would be glad to have the things I take for granted. And you taught me to always be ready to help someone who could not pay me back. Thanks to you, I'm growing up to be a mission-minded child. Thank you. You have made such a difference in my life that you're truly part of my family. If you ever need anything, a place to stay while in Michigan or anything, just let me know. Thanks for your book. Though I was crying tears of joy in the good parts and tears of sadness in the sad parts, I really enjoyed the book and will always treasure it by Quinn. And then she wrote me a reply. I was wondering, in the guidebook it says some things about diaper bags, but it does not say how to make one. What do you put in them? And I saw this picture, and I wonder what they're making. I'd like to make those too. They took a gift bag and filled it with gifts. Would a flannel board be needed in Panama for VBS? I have one that I'm going to get rid of. My grandpa's retired now. And he said he has enough time next year. He will drive a big truck full of stuff down to your church in Alabama. And I may get to meet you again. I was really moved by that response of that letter. And I thought to myself, if some adults would understand that and learn from the children. Mission work. Why bother? Why does anybody do it? It's one of those things that when you start, you just got to go back. I've been doing it for 37 years now. And I don't know, I'm a bit older than I was when I started. And I hope that I get to continue. I hope the Lord gives me good help. But there's been a lot of improvements and a lot of things that we have done. The pandemic was a blow. The people in Panama suffered. Not only Panama, but 
most third world countries because you see they don't get checks from the government they don't get the food stamps and all the other help and so it kind of opened some doors for us that we felt like we needed to respond to and I made good friends among the uh, police and at that time the police were uh, if you wanted to go to the grocery store if you could find a way to get there because all all the uh, transportation had been shut down and they depend on the local transportation but they couldn't get to the grocery stores but those that could would have one hour per week to get what they could get in the grocery store. Well, we sent money down because we were not allowed to go. And we sent over $20,000 that we had collected and were able to purchase a lot of groceries uh, for the people in the communities where we were working. We could not help the Indian communities. There's just too many and not enough resources for that. And they were suffering so terribly bad. But things began to get better. Uh, the pandemic um, worked havoc on them. We had two preachers that had passed away uh, from the, this. We had several people that got very, very ill, went up in the hospitals. Uh, it just really was not pleasant but things have gotten better and I was back there uh, two times in the last uh, year um, and actually in in this this year I went back in uh, February um, when we had our eye clinic we were able to operate on over 200 people I had one lady uh, she says, she tells the first lady, the first lady came down and we spent about an hour together and I showed around to everything and, and uh, anyway, this lady said, I've been waiting 40 years for this. I don't know if she's been waiting 40 years, but she was able to see after many, many years. And the first lady, I took her in for a watch of surgery and, and uh, she was just, she says, if I can make things easier for you, would you come back twice a year? And I think they are planning on going back twice a year, starting uh, maybe this year the, or next year. The group will go in on the 20th of January and work six days, and then perhaps in the summertime, which is very difficult because the rains start and it's very difficult, but we are kind of planning on that. So we went and, and uh, helped a, a, a lot of people and then we, uh, of course, J.W. Furr and I were working more out of uh, Sanson, where our clinic is. We had a lot of things to do with the church and, and trying to do some teaching that we have not been able to do. And we did a lot of teaching, had several Bible studies. Um, uh, there was one lady that we had, uh, I've been studying with for two years. Uh, obeyed the gospel. She was uh, very concerned about uh, where her husband, and I said, this is not about your husband, it's about you. Uh, you need to make this decision. He can't make this for you. And she has, she's faithful. She, uh, her and her four children, we were there a few months ago, back in July, and um, she, she came every day with her four children, and y'all, it rained. Uh, it must have rained 10 inches a day. It was raining terribly bad. But uh, Mark, we had a full house almost for VBS, best VBS we ever had. Uh, I said, well, the rain didn't stop them. And we had uh, some of the local, we said, we're gonna let the locals, all the local members, we want the young people to get involved. And they did. And it turned out, uh, to be one of the best VBSs we've ever had. Uh, with more children, I said, where in the world 
all these kids coming from. But we had little gifts for all of them, and we all gave them all some real nice snacks, and, and maybe that encouraged them uh, to come. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, but we were really excited about that, and it kind of helped us start making plans for how we're going to do our VBSs from now on. We think that we need to have them at the church and not at the schools because we want the church to get the credit for it and it builds the church up and the church is really doing well there in Sansone. Um, the preacher is one of the best ones, I think, in Panama. He's a fantastic young man and uh, he, he, he's very, very studious. He studies hard and he does a great, great job in working with the church in Samson. But I'll tell you, the, uh, as you, we continue trying to get things moving, after things have been down for a while, it's difficult sometimes to get things built back up, to get people going again. And that was the challenge, and that is the challenge now that we're having. Um, we have a man down there right now who's teaching classes at some of the local churches. He's making a kind of a circuit going around and, and teaching classes. He goes about twice a year uh, for, for that. And so right now, we're working on Operation Christmas Joy. And I know that you are too. We, we uh, uh, have really been kind of uh, pushed back. I, I said, well, we've got um, uh, the warehouse in Montgomery um, is full. But uh, I found out this week that they shipped six containers to the Ukraine and opened up a lot of it just this week, shipping two more next week. And Brother John Kackelman, I don't know if you know him, but Brother uh, Brother John is heading to the Ukraine, um, I think, the week after next. They're shipping two more containers and preparing for him to go. And so now we've got room to spread out, and I'm going to start working tomorrow and Betsy and some other volunteers. So if you don't have anything to do, want to volunteer, uh, we will make 400 stockings, 200 gift boxes, and 300 hygiene bags, and et cetera, et cetera. A lot to do. And then we'll make our round uh, up to Arkansas and back. We'll make that round in two days, on the 13th and 14th of October. Um, but we are planning um, a reopening of our clinic. We're planning a really, really big campaign, evangelistic campaign. Uh, we, the Indian uh, chief uh, last year um, has invited us to come to his village, uh, and we just have to go, but there are some problems uh, that uh, with human trafficking in the villages and we are having to be very careful uh, about going in because it gets closer to the border of Colombia and uh, as you know that's not a this not the safe area to be however we normally have more police than we have workers and they uh, very very um, protective of us and we appreciate that I met with one of the police uh, commanders uh, when I was there in July, and uh, we, we can get anything we need, whatever we need, and he uh, and his wife are very good friends, and we're hoping to have, we've already given him a, her a book of The Muscle and Shovel. that's a great book to give people, and they have it in Spanish, and so we bought a bunch of those and given them out, uh, one young man uh, was, uh, is very close. I talked to him at the hotel when his wife was baptized. She's a policeman. He's a police lieutenant. And he said he, he would like to have six more of the books so he could give them out to some of his friends. And so, 
You never know about what can be done. But we are planning next year, early next year, to reopen our clinic uh, and try to get it kicked back off again. I appreciate you folks. Uh, appreciate Liberty for being so uh, supportive over the years. You have uh, been, from day one, you have supported this mission and you never have looked back. Um, I appreciate that. And if I can ever tell you anything else that you might want to know or you're concerned about, uh, I certainly want to let you folks know about what's going on. But right now, it's beginning to roll again, and we're just really, really happy uh, for that. We have, I'll be going down on the 5th of uh, December with some others, uh, going back on the 20th of um, January, and then going back at, at the end of March. That's right now the plans, and we have not yet planned the summer trip. If anybody wants to join, we'd be glad to have you join up with us. We appreciate it, and I want you to think about what I said earlier. Uh, why do mission work? Why would anybody do mission work? Somebody says, well, Jesus commanded. You know, Matthew 28, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Mark 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He commanded. And yes, but is that the best reason? Somebody said, the command to do something is really the sorriest reason for doing something. We know to obey Jesus Christ. We are to obey Him. And we are to go. I love my family and I take care of them because I love my family. Not because the Bible commands me, but because I love them. And we do mission work because we love people. And Jesus loved people. And he set the example for you and I to do that. And our purpose is to hear a person say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And watch them obey the gospel. That's our purpose. Does everybody obey the gospel? No, no. Do you know what we are? We're seed sowers. We're to sow the seed. God's going to give the increase. He promises that. And so think about that. And when you think about responsibility as a, a Christian, you think about maybe the situation in your life is not what it should be. And you need to be encouraged. You need prayers. Then we're here to encourage you. We can come and we can pray for you. Or you need to obey the gospel. All things are ready. You come to the feast. Won't you come while we're standing, while we're saying?
Is there anyone who was not able to partake of the Lord's Supper this morning and who needs to at this time? Let's pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, hallowed be thy great and wonderful name. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for his life and his example, for his love, his grace, and his mercy. Thank you that he was willing to go to the cross and to die for us, that we might be saved. Thank you for this sacrifice. This time, thank you for this bread, which is his body, which was hung on the cross to die for us. Help the one taking take in a manner that's pleasing in your sight. Thank you for your son. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father and God in heaven, we are thankful for the blessings you've given to us and how you've provided for us and always provide what we need. We thank you, Father, that you recognize our need for salvation and you've provided for us in that also. We thank you for sending your Son, who's our sacrifice and who saves us. Thank you for his willingness to die for us. And we pray, Father, that you would bless this uh, fruit of the vine, which is his blood that was shed for us, that washes us and cleanses us. Please bless the one taking of it, that they might do so in a manner pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. closing song this Lord's Day will be this is the day the Lord hath made it is always so encouraging to have brother Larry join us thank you for sharing your time with us this evening brother and for letting us be a small part of the work that you're engaged in before brother Jerry comes forward to lead closing prayer we'll sing this song 